Hi, I'm Heather Kahn. As we get older, it is inevitable, bone loss. But there is exciting new research underway to help better understand and treat weak bones. And we're lucky to have with us today Dr. Mary Buckstein from the Center for Advanced Orthopedic Studies at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Now, we hear so much about osteoporosis, especially as women. Why should we worry about it? I'm really glad you asked that, Heather, because one of the things is people don't think too much about their bone health, and it really is a problem as you get older because one in two women over the age of 50 will suffer a fracture, and in, and in fact, one in five men will suffer a fracture. Mm. So it's really something that we should pay attention to. We can do something about it. And so one of the messages I'd like to get across is that people should talk to their doctor about their bone health and see what they can do. And what causes osteoporosis and bone loss? And is it just an inevitable part of aging? Right, so that certainly is what everyone thinks, that, oh, I'm just doomed, I'm gonna have osteoporosis because I get older. And certainly it is associated with aging. Part of the things, one of the things that contributes to osteoporosis is a lack of activity. So we get less active as we get older, we don't exercise. Also women, as they go through the menopause, the loss of estrogen contributes to bone loss. Mm -hmm. And there's also a big component of family history. So if your mother had a hip fracture, for example, you're at increased risk of osteoporosis and suffering a fracture. So what are some things we can do to improve our bone health? There's a number of things you can do, and I'm, again, I'm glad you asked, because one of the things you certainly want to do is watch your diet and have bone healthy or bone productive foods. So that would be calcium and vitamin D, a regular, very good diet, high in nutrients, like everyone recommends. Um, the other thing that's very important is to get regular weight-bearing exercise. And the point there is that most fractures occur when you fall down. So if you don't fall down, you probably aren't gonna get a fracture. Okay. So there's some very simple things that one can do. Good advice. Now, you had an experiment aboard the space shuttle last summer. Tell me about that. Yeah, so this was really cool. It was a really wonderful opportunity to do some science on the last shuttle mission ever. And so we spent a month at Kennedy Space Center and we sent some mice into orbit and we were trying to see if we could prevent their bone loss. And sort of what underlies that, as I mentioned earlier, you have the end result of inactivity in space because you're exposed to microgravity. So NASA's very interested in this because astronauts lose bone when they go to space. And if we ever wanna to go to Mars or beyond, we need to be able to take care of their bone health. But it's also appropriate here on Earth for people who are bedridden or after a stroke children who have cerebral palsy. These are all conditions of disuse that lead to osteoporosis. So we were testing the ability of a new therapy to prevent the bone loss in space and actually induce new bone formation. This is a, an issue that's very close to your heart because you lost your dad um, from a, a fracture and complications that that ensued. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, it's actually a really good teaching point and I'm glad that I can talk about it now. Mm -hmm. So my dad was 82 and went to work every day and suffered a hip fracture when his dog pushed him over when they went out for a walk. And like many older folk, there were a number of sequelae that happened after that, one little thing after another. And yeah, he died five months after hip fracture. Mm -hmm. And I think we all wanna know that we wanna take care of our bones and that men should be aware too that they're at risk for osteoporosis. Right. All right, well tell me what will be the next steps in your work? What's in the future? Well, we're working really hard now to try to find methods to identify those who are at greatest risk for fracture early on so they can begin either lifestyle changes to improve their bone health or think about what therapies might be appropriate for them. And on the treatment side, we're certainly hoping to finish the analysis of our space bones and um, help company move that into clinical trials. Dr. Buckstein, is there any other really important take-home message you want to give to people today? Yeah, I just think one of the things that we forget about, we don't feel bad when we have poor bone health. And so it's really something we have to keep after. And so this regular exercise, calcium and vitamin D, and really, you know, it should be something that we think about, like your cholesterol levels and your blood pressure. Talk to your doctor about your bone health, and that's really important. Sometimes I get intimidated because I think it means heavy duty lifting when you talk about bone building exercise. Does it need to be heavy duty lifting? It doesn't have to be heavy duty lifting. As I mentioned, one of the things you wanna do is not fall down. So exercises that improve your balance. So, you know, Tai Chi is a good one. Yoga is an excellent exercise, but any kind of weight bearing exercise, walking, dancing is a really good one for seniors. They really enjoy it. So it doesn't have to be going to the gym and lifting weights to improve your bone health. Okay. Good information, Dr. Buckstein. Thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Dr. Mary Buckstein, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center.